Today, there's no way for God to forgive anyone. He's already done the work. Don't ask him to do it again. In the book of Job, he said uh, in, in chapter 23 that he esteemed God's word above eating food. How about you? Is God's word what's most important or what you read on Facebook? Today, let's just allow his word to supersede and, and to trump everything else. Without it, our spiritual man becomes anorexic. We got to stay nourished and built up in our faith, something that can't happen without a proper understanding of God's word. There's some that'll tell you things like uh, sins are paid for but not forgiven. Or or this one, they'll say just because sins are not being imputed doesn't mean they're forgiven. Hey, the world's sins were paid for. That means the sin debt was forgiven and is why God stopped imputing them. Not hard. Sins paid, debt forgiven, God stopped imputing. Sins paid, debt forgiven, God stopped imputing. That's the order. The gospel is that Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose the third day. That is not an offer of forgiveness. It's a declaration, a decree, a proclamation of, of, of something already accomplished. And it's why it's often referred to as the finished work of Christ. It's finished. Not finished after you decide to believe. Listen, when you hear someone say you can be forgiven, as if you're not already, you're listening to someone who's teaching limited atonement. Don't kid yourself. They may not admit it, but the proof's in their fruit, their words. Today, there's no way for God to forgive anyone. He's already done the work. Don't ask Him to do it again. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Your believing it won't magically make it so. For sins to be forgiven, God would have to come back and mount the cross. Die all over we're not to be shouting, get your sins forgiven. We're to be shouting, get saved. Today is the day of salvation. Forgiveness won't go back into effect until the close of this dispensation. Just as the Apostle Peter said in Acts 3.19. There you can read about when the little flock will get their sins blotted out. It's time future. There'll be people in hell for their sins... But that's not our dispensational good news. That only applies to those unbelievers before this current dispensation and those who miss the rapture and are alive after this dispensation. People going to hell and being judged for their sins is not a but now reconciliational truth. It falls outside Paul's dispensational parentheses. Any sins being forgiven after this dispensation will be the sins they commit after this dispensation. But not a one of them will be judged for their re-imputed sins. God won't re-impute sins that Christ already died and paid for. They're gone, washed away by the blood, never to be brought up again. Not being judged for sins is good news for now, for this current administration. Before this dispensation, we read in Matthew where Jesus told Israel to be forgiven, they had to first forgive. They had to forgive others, then they could be forgiven. That was the order. After this dispensation, we also can read in 1 John 1, 9, how that at that time, There'll be those that'll need to confess their sins to get forgiveness. But now, right now, that's not what's going on. That's not what you should be concerned with. Currently, under this present administration, we neither forgive others to get it or confess them to get it. If they're not being imputed, what sins would we confess? 
I can understand how those who are still under the dark cloud of denominationalism, held captive by religion, would have trouble understanding this, but I'm amazed at those who claim to rightly divide the word of truth and claim to understand the uniqueness of Paul's apostleship, how they're having trouble with it. Listen, 2 Corinthians 5.19 won't be in effect during the next administration. Some are forgetting this. A change of a dispensation brings a change of an administration. And a change of an administration brings a change of how things operate. During the next administration, sins will be imputed. And it's those sins they'll be judged for. All these supposed gotcha verses. Israel's tribulation is something that will follow the body of Christ being filled up. When that happens, those in the church the body of Christ are out of here. This dispensation closes. So when we say that no one goes to hell for their sins, that's a dispensational truth. It means right now. Everyone you've known that rejected the gospel and they died, died unsaved, but they did not die unforgiven. They're not going to pay for sins Christ already paid for. And these who have yet to grasp this dispensational news like to call themselves right dividers, but they know very little of the ministry of reconciliation. The way, the, the one and only way for someone to be forgiven has already taken place. It happened on a cross almost 20 centuries ago. And there are those who have been trying to detract from this fact ever since. Through Calvinism, Arminianism, and sadly, now, even some grace-believing dispensationalism. The wages of sin is what? Death, not belief. Christ tasted death for who? For those who believe? That's what some will tell you. No, for everyone. 1 Timothy 2.6, a ransom for all. If I paid your ransom, you're free from that debt. And your disbelief won't change a thing. A ransom was owed, a ransom was paid. If you don't believe it, so what? It's true if you believe it, it's true if you don't. Your belief changes nothing. A sin debt was owed, a sin debt was paid. Sins are not the issue, so move on with it. Spend your time getting others saved instead of arguing with those who already are. For those listening who are unsaved, hey, you need to take advantage of this good news right now, while you still can. The day of salvation, not the day to get your sins forgiven. Today, trust Christ alone for your salvation, and you won't be a candidate for the tribulation. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can lead a man to the evidence, but you can't make him think. 